Hey, what's up guys, Sam here, and today I've got something really, really exciting, and you can probably tell from the title of this video, it's this. Uh, this is the Canon EL1, the newest speed light that Canon just announced. Uh, and so today we're going to be doing a first impressions and first look at this flash because I just literally just got this in the evening. Uh, however, I do want to say that I think this is a pre-production unit. It's not the final copy because it says sample on it, um, but it's probably close to the retail model that everybody will be getting. So the Canon EL1 is Canon's flagship flash model, or at least soon to be if this is already uh, released out in the market. Uh, this is supposed to be like the Canon 1DX version of all the flashes. It's supposed to be weather sealed, it's supposed to be really high quality uh, and really you can really feel from it but I'll go there into a bit later. So the previous flash, at least the previous flagship model flash was the 600EX RT2 and this is my personal flash. So for my professional work, this is the flash that I've been going to most of the time. Of course, if I'm doing strobes, uh, that's a different story. Those are different kinds of flashes, but on camera flashes, this is the flash that I want. It's really good. I uh, really love the light quality and light output that comes out from this. It's very consistent versus the older, uh, the older like the third party flashes that I used to use last time. However, there are still things that I don't like about this. Number one, it's not, the build quality definitely is, I wish it was a little bit better and the worst part I think for me is really the recycle times uh, and I think it just comes down to the fact that it uses double A batteries and your batteries do have to be of a certain level to allow like fast recharge cycles and I use disposable batteries and you know it doesn't really help and so I'm really really interested to see how this EL1 compares to this flash that was announced I think in 2016 you know it's been five years since a flagship flash has been announced and I'm excited to see how the EL1 works out. So yeah guys, let's take a quick look at the flash itself. Uh, this is the case that it comes with. Interestingly enough, uh, they went back to the original design. This was the 600EX RT2 in the case that it came with. Uh, definitely a lot more like uh, the more flat, a bigger one. Uh, I gotta say I prefer this one because it's much easier to store it this way than it is like this. Uh, I just wanted to have my 600 here just to show you like uh, just some examples. But this is the flash that it comes with. Don't mind the, the what here and the sample here because once again, as I said, this is a sample unit. Uh, but as you can tell, the flash itself is pretty big. Uh, this is my phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and you can see it's massive. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I wanna show you next to the 600EX RT2. So once again, I also, I don't have the rest of the box. I just have the flash itself. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You might, there's I think other things like the charger uh, and the other like diffusers and stuff like that. Uh, but you can tell the difference straight away. The This flash is massive. I mean, the body here is chunky as heck. And obviously this is to accom accommodate for the uh, bigger battery. I will show you that in a bit. As you can see from the side, the length is big um, and the design choice, look at that red, I mean like, you know, the red ring that everybody loves. As you can see, the back has also changed a little bit. I do prefer this, uh, this here, the, the scroll wheel here is just honestly trash compared to this. This is a fantastic, this really feels like on the 1DX or like a proper DSLR uh, scroll wheel. This is incredible. This is sometimes a little bit hard. Obviously all the buttons, the layouts have changed. Uh, as you can see from the side as well, here is the battery compartment. There's batteries inside this. There is no battery inside the ER1 just yet, but it opens up like that uh, if you guys are interested. Interestingly enough, there is this um, rubber all around. Uh, I'm not so sure why. Uh, I would have liked it to be like flat, flash, uh, just the same all across the board, but I guess it's just a design choice. But I do like this newer, newer, cleaner look. Uh, really, really nice. Obviously you have this and then the lock as well. So I'm gonna show you the battery and what it looks like. This is the battery that comes with the flash. It's uh, when I first saw it, I, I thought it was the same as the uh, LPE6 or LPE6Ns that come with most Canon cameras. Uh, but as you can see, there is this longer thing here. And this is the original, this is the LPE6N battery. As you can see, it's longer. I think there's protrusion here. Uh, you can even see 
the documentation is LPEL, so that tells you that it's for the flash. But and you can see the contacts here are also different. So that basically means that I don't think that you can use the LPE six ends inside the flash itself, which is a shame because that was actually something that I was really really interested in. When I saw that they used this battery, I thought that you could use this. That just means that I can just buy a bunch of Canon batteries and I can use them across in this flash. Uh, but I think that just means you need to buy uh, another one. Actually, let's just quickly try it out right now. So this is the flash. So this is the LPE 6N, the one that goes in your camera. Although it looks like it fits, it doesn't. You can't, you, you physically can't go in anymore. I think that's just something blocking it right there. And just to show you that the battery does go in, this is the flash battery, the longer one. And you can just put it in and it just goes right in. So now I do want to show you the uh, the whole menu system and going through it because I thought that was actually pretty interesting. Uh, but first off, I do want to comment on the build quality uh, just a little bit. As you can tell, it definitely plastic, definitely plastic, but it's a more matte finish compared to this one. Uh, it's definitely beefier. I'm not so sure how much it weighs, but I think uh, the specs on it will tell you. The scroll wheel, as I mentioned, is fantastic. And this dial here, I'll show you in a second, is amazing. It overall, it does feel like a, like does feel like it's on a body of a 1D, sort of the body of a 1DX. Actually, let me just take it out. So this is my 1DX Mark III. For those of you who are curious, this is a Condor Blue Cine RF cap. Link in the description if you're looking for something like this. I really love this because it really looks really cool. But that's really all it does. Like just, it's like a nice accessory for your camera. But if we put it just side by side, I mean like. <laughs> I mean, the finish is very similar. Let me just put this on. I do like the look of that. And, and you can see the design sort of really matches the back of the camera. I actually really like that. This flash just goes all the way like normal, any other flash. It doesn't go completely. Uh, you gotta go like that, you can do that. And it has the uh, diffuser as well, the, and the white card. Uh, something that you do want to keep in mind also is that look at how big the flash head is and this is also to accommodate the uh, modeling lamp that's inside here which is really interesting because I don't think that has been done in uh, Canon flashes before, uh, correct me if I'm wrong but let's look at the uh, operations of this flash so let's look at the flash uh, obviously just turning it on just like that you can tell uh, the screen, really nice screen, really big, very streamlined design. I actually really like that. Uh, first things first, let's try the lamp. You can just press this button here and it lights up. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. That's cool. So if you look, um, if I press the lamp, just like that. And I think you can increase the power, but I'm not too particularly sure. That's really interesting because now you can just, well, for those of you who are not so sure what a modeling lamp does, it's just to show you where the light lands. Uh, so it's a much more clear indication. But or sometimes uh, what I have done on certain strobes is that I actually use the modeling lamp as a light source for video because when you do hybrid shoots, this can be very helpful. Uh, you shouldn't put it on for too long because you can melt the flash bulbs. But this is actually very interesting because you can actually use this as sort of like a light, a quick small fill light if you are doing both photo and video, which is very interesting for this flash and one of the applications that I do want to try out. Uh, but as you can see here, just like normal. So the way you access everything is, let's say you want to go to the zoom, you just like that. Just go up, tilt up, and you can go auto. If you want to go different modes, you just go down, ETTL. I am not so sure what this is. I think that could be... Uh, I have no idea. I'll say I only use mainly ETTL and manual. Uh, I don't really use anything else. But as you can see, it's just so much easier. I just want to show you the difference between this and this. So if I wanted to change my... Go into ETTL or manual on my 600EX RT2, what I had to do was I actually had to go to, the, to my mode and switch like that. And really, the scroll wheel is honestly really hard to make it quick. And so basically what I can do with this is I can just go down and there. 
it's like playing a game you know it's and it's so much easier and so much intuitive when you're doing that versus like pressing this here here and there on the flash itself uh, but let's say I wanted to change power uh, wait let's just change this back to manual first if I wanted to change power I could just do it and do that and uh, but on the flash on the 600 EXRT2 what I have to do to change power is that I actually have to press the no wait hold on let me just change it back to manual first. I have to press like this and just go like that. You know, I have to press and change, uh, which is always something that I found really, really challenging uh, to do. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to do when you're on the fly, but this is just like, just, just, just so intuitive. And I think you could, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you can just quickly change it just like that as well. Um, it's sort of the same on that as, uh, on the 600 EX RT2, but the way the joystick and the scroll wheel is integrated together, it makes everything so much easier. Anybody who has shot with the 600 EX RT2 will know exactly what I'm talking about. But it looks really streamlined. And look at and talking about power, we have one, two, all the way down. And the more interesting part of this flash is it goes all the way to one eight thousand one nine two, which is insane and i'll just show you the difference uh if you can see here i am going to shoot this at full power first so you can see the difference test flash you can see that's really long but if i go all the way to one eight thousand look how small it is that's so cute <laughs> look at that look at that and this really opens up a whole new level of possibility when you're shooting this could be used as a really tiny fill flash or if you are looking to use this as a uh, master if you've got multiple other flashes just means that you know this can just hardly put any light on your subject or on the scene and it will still fire all the other flashes so that's one of the interesting ones and it's not just at 1 8000 you can go that's just insane these are numbers that I've never seen before this is crazy <laughs> oh, awesome so what's next is I'm going to look at the sub menu for this. Uh, I do have to look at what other, what all these do, but I'm just going to show you straight away just to see if you are interested in something. I think this could be battery. Awesome. Try this modeling flash. Oh, okay. I think you can off turn it on and off as it's firing and things like that. So that's interesting. You can always uh, what self F N clear what P F N. I have no idea what these do, and this is already more than. There's a fan in this. Huh. Okay. Oh, obviously yes, because there is like the modeling lamp, and I do think that uh, it needs to cool it, and this sort of explains why the flash itself is so big. Because there's probably a fan inside here that has to cool it down if it gets too hot. Uh, ironically, the R5 should have that as well, but <laughs> information... Oh, that's so interesting. You can have your battery info right here. And that's that's basically it. You know, if you wanted to go to different modes, you want to go to all, all this. Making sure it's a receiver or a master and things like that. That's if you are using multiple flashes, but I don't really use those. I use strobes if I need. Uh, but yeah. This is just a quick look at the build and just the operations of the flash. Now, I do want to try a quick test and just to see the recycle times of this flash uh, on a camera. Let's try that out now. So this is going to be a quick test on this, uh, my 1DX to see the recycle times. Uh, this is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I am going to put this at one power first and see how it goes if I burst. So this is going to be on manual. Uh, we're going to see how much this flashes. This is on full power. Okay, so it, as as expected, it will, uh, on full power, it doesn't really flash all the way. Let's go down to something a bit more manageable. And that is the one fourth power. Now let's just try that, really want to. So it's going at one force, so that means that anything else other than that is going to be fantastic. And just for fun, let's try with my 600 EXRT2 at one power. We're going to try. 
Okay, obviously it's charging right now. A little bit slow. And these are fresh batteries, by the way. And let's go at one fourth and see how fast it does. Okay, it's gone already. And that's, <laughs> that's basically it. I mean, you can clearly tell already how fast and how much faster the these um, the EL1 works, especially when it comes to recycle time. So that's really good. Uh, I think that's a testament to, to the proprietary battery that's in this flash. I mean, the recycle times of this is crazy and it's something that I've never experienced before uh, in a speed light. So I'm really, really excited to uh, try this flash out a little bit more. So to me, one of the things that I'm really excited about is also that 1-8000 power. Uh, that is, I, to my knowledge right now, I think most flashes also only go down to like maybe at max 1256 or maybe 1512 maybe. And the reason why that's so exciting is because it really opens up much more opportunities for you to use uh, this flash in different kinds of scenarios. Uh, so what I did was I took the EL1 and the R5 that's shooting me right now and the EF24-105 to and uh, my girlfriend and I, we went out to try and shoot some portraits in low light. And particularly what I wanted to try to do, I wanted to see if the 1-8000 of a power was low enough or at least a little bit powerful enough to just give me a feel uh, when I was shooting in the dark. So as you can see from the POV, you can tell that it's pretty dark. Uh, it's a little bit hard, obviously the the, the light isn't really hitting her face so I put the power of the flash down to 1,800 it just gives this light on her face that makes a whole difference uh, it's just supposed to like light up her face just to give us a fill light on her face just to like open up the shadows and things like that I think it really looks like the, the flash is coming from ambient light which is really really interesting for me and what I, like what I said again it really just opens up opportunities for you to shoot. So, so here are a couple more uh, images that we shot on the night. I wanted to do some like slow shutter speeds, uh, trying to get her moving as if we're moving through the city and moving through the lights. And one thing that really surprised me was that even though it was a direct flash, uh, it was actually much softer than I anticipated. Sometimes when I tried with my EXRT2, sometimes it was a little bit too strong and it could be, I think, due to the bigger flash head on this and uh, maybe just the difference in the Fresnel that it's on the uh, on the actual flash unit itself on the ear one. It just gives much more softer light when you're pointing directly to the subject. So this is something that interesting that I found. Uh, once again, I'm not really good at scientific testing so maybe this is something that somebody can help me out so yeah i'm really happy with the shots that we took at night are uh, really really nice light really really you know just try and capture the mood of movement at, at night uh, i do want to try other shoots in the future so uh stay tuned for that so yeah guys i think you can tell that i really really like this flash even though i've just shot with it for a while the control system the new control system and the dial is just incredible uh, alongside the proprietary battery that just helps you know just it just makes this flash a lot more uh, reliable on the field the only downsides i can see is that honestly it is quite heavy uh, even without the battery inside it it still weighs a bit and it is bigger it means it will take up much more room in your camera bag but is this the trade-off that you are willing to pay um I'm not so sure that really depends on you and I think I want to go into the final piece of this and that is the price of this flash. The price of this EL1 currently costs I think 4999 5000 ringgit in Malaysia and I think that accounts to like a thousand USD. A thousand USD is a lot of money and I think the 600 EX RT2 was 2.5 about half the price of the EL1. And I think you have to ask yourself this question and even myself as well is, is this half the quality of this? I think just like any good piece of equipment, you do need to ask yourself, is this worth the upgrade for you? Is it worth paying that premium? For me, I think the biggest thing is really that proprietary battery. Just using a much more powerful battery really is a big deal. Uh, for me, last time when I was shooting with the 600 EX RT2, sometimes I would have long recharge cycles because I need to shoot at a higher uh, at a higher power and I have to tell my clients, okay, hold on, sorry, my flash is recharging. Uh, and that can be a little bit difficult in a time current situation and sometimes it makes you look bad. So for me, just the upgrade of the battery alone really is worth it. But there is something that you do have to consider and that is as a professional, we own multiple bodies, multiple lenses. 
and because of that you also do need to own multiple flashes to buy two of these is 10 grand i mean you can buy a really really good lens so you can buy something else with 10 grand i mean you can buy a lot with 10 grand so really you know when when we when professionals when we buy stuff is we don't buy just one we have to buy a few because we do need it to match up with our gear we do need to match up just in case like as backup and really are you going to spend more on one of these um you know for me i'm still contemplating i do really really love the el1 i think it's a fantastic flash um the price definitely is expensive not gonna lie but i think a lot of the cost is justified in the reliability that you're getting in terms of like consistent flash output uh, or consistent flashes or slow or faster recharge cycles and this is just something that you need to ask yourself if that is worth uh, the cost and speaking of asking if you are interested i do plan to do a full review on this flash uh, I'm not so sure if I get to keep this flash for longer than a couple of days. If I can, I probably will try to do a review. But if you have any questions about this flash you'd like to know, just drop that in the comment below. I will test it out for you. Uh, or you can drop me a message on Instagram or drop me an email. I'll try my best to help out. So yeah, if you guys like this video, if you find it helpful, uh, I would really appreciate a like, comment and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out the channel a lot. Thank you so much for your time and watching this video. It means the world to me that are people out there that I don't know that are watching the videos that I put out. Uh, and I think that's really impactful for me and just something that I want to continue in the future. So yeah, thank you guys so much once again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.